Okay, so today in 4.4 for advanced algebra trig, we're talking about operations on functions. So operations being how do you add them, subtract them, multiply, and divide them. It was a short lesson today because we did a lot of review. Um, so uh, what I did was I gave you the properties of function composition, right? So, and the word composition is just basically when you put two or more functions together. So we went over properties. So one, two, three, and four. So we're going to add two functions f of x plus g of x, it's just equal to f plus g of x. And uh, these behave as you would expect them to. They don't make a whole lot of sense until you start actually doing them. So uh, I want to point out number four, though, um, because f of x divided by g of x is f divided by g of x, provided that g of x is not equal to zero, because, of course, you can never divide by zero in mathematics. People get really upset with you. Okay, so here's an example, and hopefully this will make some sense to you. So... Um, we're going to let f of x be the square root of x plus 2. So that's a shark fin that's been moved two units to the left. And then we have uh, g of x equals the square root of 3 minus x. So we have a, a replacement of x with a negative x and then a 3 over. So that, that makes an interesting graph. You plug it in your calculator and see what you get. Um, we're going to find the following and uh, state the domain of each. So I'm going to do four of these for you. I'm going to do f plus g of x, right? Uh, okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, right, is we're going to write down, well, oh, hold on a second. Uh, this is equal to, right, this is just equal to f of x plus g of x. So that means I'm going to have the square root of x plus 2, because that's what f of x is, plus the square root of 3 minus x. So there is, that's it. There's not much I can do, nothing more I can really do with that. I can't simplify that or anything like that. So that's as far as I can go. But I want to talk about the domains, right? So for f of x equals the square root of x plus 2. Remember, I want to take everything inside there underneath the radical and make it positive. So I'm going to have x plus 2 greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, the domain for f of x is x must be greater than or equal to negative 2. So I want to keep that in mind. Then I want to talk about g of x, right? Well, g of x is the square root of 3 minus x. So again, I want everything under the radical to be positive. So I'm going to have 3 minus x is greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, 3 must be bigger than or equal to x, which is logically equivalent to x being less than or equal to 3. So I want to keep that in mind. So I have these two constraints here for f of x and g of x. So therefore, the, uh, the domain, right, the domain for my uh, sum function, f plus g of x, must be all real numbers x such that putting these two together uh, yields uh, this answer, negative 2 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 3. So there is the domain for that one. And again, so this one, right? Um, if x is bigger than or equal to negative 2, that means that negative 2 must be less than or equal to x. So that's how I got that information. I plugged it right there, and I combined both of them together. So there's first part A, okay? Let's do part B. Where let's take, um, what, what did I do there? Oh yeah, let's do um, let's do f minus g of x, right? Okay, well that's just going to be you know f of x minus g of x, which is going to be the square root of x plus two uh, minus the square root of three minus x, and there you go, nothing fancy going on there. And the domain is exactly the same thing as it was before, all real x such that uh, negative two less than or equal to x less than or equal to three. So nothing changes there. And in fact. Nothing changes for the next one either, so let's do C. Um, what if I did uh, F, whoops, it's not F. What did F times, right, well, that's just equal to, so that's equal to F of X times G of X, right? So that's going to be the square root of X plus 2 times the square root of 3 minus X. Now, this one I can take a little further and write it as a single square root of x plus 2 times 3 minus x. I could I could um, use FOIL and multiply that out, but I could just leave it like that. And the domain for this thing is exactly the same as it was before. All real numbers x such that negative 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3. So nothing has changed so far for that. In part D, though, something does need to change. So let's figure out f divided by g quantity of x. So that would just be f of x over g of x, right? Which is the square root of x plus 2 divided by 
square root of 3 minus x, okay? Um, which is then if I, if I if I rationalize the denominator here, right? Multiply top and bottom by square root of 3 um, Oh, sorry about that. I was setting something up on the other page. Um, anyways, let me show you something. So if I take square root of x plus 2 divided by 3 minus x, right? If I take a look at the graph, something interesting happens, right? So square root of x plus 2 over square root of 3 minus x. So you'll you'll notice that like at the point 3, we're approaching this sort of this vertical asymptote here, right? So we need to exclude 3 from our domain, right? 2 seems to be okay, right? We can zoom in on 2 and seem to have seem to be okay at the point negative 2, but as you get closer and closer to 3, your graph shoots off to infinity as it does in this case. So we need to exclude 3 from uh, from the domain in this particular case. So going back over here, right, um, what the book does, they do something interesting here. They multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3 uh, minus x, the square root of 3 minus x, and that simplifies this uh, composite function to the square root of x plus 2 times 3 minus x, all divided by 3 minus x. And you can see down here, right, since we need we need to exclude the 3 because we would be dividing by 0, which is why you get the asymptote here at x equals a 3. So that's how these things are connected. So the domain for this last one would be all real numbers x such that negative 2 less than or equal to x, no problem there, but you have to strictly re restrict the domain on the 3 part uh, notice that that is not less than or equal to because of this reason you get a vertical asymptote there. Okay, hope that helps you guys out.